what is it called so what we can say when we are talking about the drainage mechanism at the corridor irido corneal angle at the irido corneal angle there is what is there is trabecular meshwork trabecular meshwork right now of course as a canal of slime is circular like this right trabecular meshwork is also all around it right so aqueous humor has to pass through trabecular meshwork here is one very important point trabecular meshwork offers resist even though it is permeable to aqueous humor but to some extent it offer resistance physiological resistance normal functional resistance to the aqueous humor drainage actually that resistance to the south flow contribute to the normal intraocular pressure this is very important because some cases of glaucoma rather in many cases of glaucoma chronic open angle glaucomas with aging and due to some other reasons this meshwork becomes sclerosed hardened slightly fibrotic channels offer more resistance and intraocular pressure goes up and intraocular pressure goes up so this mesh work is very important to remember trabecular mesh work this trabecular mesh work normally offers resistance to the intraocular fluid which is trying to percolate from the anterior chamber or from the irido corneal angle to the canal of shalem is that right this normal resistance right due to that reason the fluid which is present over here in the posterior anterior chamber it means maintains the pressure of somewhere between 10 to 20 mm of mercury or approximately on average 15 mm of mercury why it was so important to mention its mechanism of resistance because in some people as the age or i will discuss some other reasons later that this mesh work connective tissue it undergoes sclerotic process it undergoes a hardening it undergoes in the appropriate fibrotic situation and it offers unduly high resistance to the flow of the aqueous humor from the angle of the anterior chamber to towards the canal of schlem and pressure inside the eyeball increases is that right and that may that eventually contribute to the open angle glaucoma primary open angle glaucoma am i clear any question i want to really make it more clear i will bring the canal of schlem here right so that it becomes very clear to your mind this is the canal of schlem and here around it i will make what is here trabecular mesh work is the right trabecular mesh work and in all of slime is like that is the right i mean it's not only here a cut section but actually eyeball it throughout if i show you the eyeball is like that can all of slime is like a circle here is it right at corneal scleral junction inside so here is canal of schlem and here i will make yes are you understanding this diagram here is the angle there here is cornea is on this side iris is on this side i mean where i'm standing this is the iris here and here is cornea and this is the angle between the cornea and iris iris and cornea here is iris right what is this ciliary body part of a ciliary body then sclera in which there is canal of schlem and this meshwork and then cornea actually
so this is trabecular meshwork right through which fluid has to pass through to reach to the canal of shlem am i clear any question up to this then if you know this much that is enough but if really you want to know more from where the fluid from the from the canal of shlem where the fluid goes actually canal of shlem has special draining channels which are called collectors channels what are they called collector channels right now these are aqueous collector channels it means from the canal of shlem now fluid is entering this was the canal of shlem and what is here it is not blood i think it should not be bloody color right i should make some other color let me make it black so that you remember this is not blood right aqueous humor is coming to canal of shlem from the canal of shlem it is draining into collector's channel right and from there it has reached here which are called aqueous veins what are these called aqueous veins and these aqueous veins eventually drain into yes what is this epi scleral vein what is this epi scleral vein epi scleral veins which eventually drain into larger extraocular veins and ophthalmic veins is that right now again if we are going to talk about drainage system when we talk about the drainage system first of all you should talk about the angle what you should talk about i write out corneal angle at the angle what is there second point trabecular meshwork and from the trabecular meshwork what is there your canal of shlem is that right and from the canal of shlem even you can say simply that canal of shlem which is full of aqueous humor not venous blood eventually drain into epithelial venous system okay or we can say it drains into smaller what is this collector channels and then aqueous veins okay i will write it here what are these collectors channels and then aqueous veins and eventually epithelial vein i want you to repeat when we are talking this is very important to understand understand the drainage of the aqueous humor when we are talking about the drainage of the aqueous humor point number 1 we'll talk about drainage occur at which point i write oh corneal angle say it loudly at the corneo uh, i sorry i write oh corneal angle at the write oh corneal angle there is a special network porous permeable network of connective tissue present which is called trabecular meshwork which offer the relative resistance to the flow of the fluid right and eventually this aqueous humor fluid drains into canal of shlem which is basically previously it was considered a lymph venous channel but now structurally and at uh you can say molecular level we have studied and we came to know its epithelial cells are basically lymphatic, lymphatic. in all of shlem is present at corneo scleral junction and it runs circumferentially is that right in all of shlem eventually drains into epithelial region is that right any question up to this so now you know very clearly that aqueous humor is produced by ciliary processes of ciliary body actively secreted by epithelium released into posterior chamber through the pupil come into anterior chamber right and this provide nutrition to the lens and the cornea and 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 removes the waste product maintains the appropriate pressure and eventually drains and it is continuously being produced continuously circulating in the same way it is continuously being drained at aridocorneal junction through the trabecular meshwork into the canal of shlem 
which drains into collector channels and aqueous veins which eventually go into episcleral veins which are headed to reach to the ophthalmic veins and get the aqueous humor get mixed to the systemic circulation here any question up to this now a very important concept this is a very delicate system and you know eye is a very important part uh, uh, organ and it's a very delicate system which is uh, maintaining the pressure inside and also meeting the metabolic needs of lens and the cornea now and it drains into the trabecular meshwork but if due to any reason there is some particulate matter here let's suppose there's hemorrhage unfortunately or there is some infection which will bring lot of white blood cells neutrophils now due to any reason if there is what is there hemorrhage or infection or any other pathology which lead to addition of cellular debris here then what happen when cell, red blood cells or white blood cells or uh, some damaged cells when they will reach at this area they will block the draining mechanism that is going to be a tragedy and actually it happens in cases of secondary glaucoma right so but nature want to keep this system running smoothly as long as it can so there must be some mechanism to keep this system clean and not allow the blockage at any level so what is the mechanism number one there is another pathway available right number one there is another pathway available that is called accessory draining pathway and another mechanism is at multiple point we have the cells which eat the debris we'll talk about that first i will talk about the other pathway right the accessory pathway because this pathway drainage it drains about 90 percent of the aqueous humor there's an additional pathway some of the aqueous humor right that goes into ciliary muscle there is there was ciliary muscle here ciliaris right through the ciliary muscle right it passes through the ciliary body and then it passes into what is it choroid what is this choroid and then supracoroidal space supracoroidal space which is outside the choroid and inside the sclera it goes into scleral system and drains into scleral venous plexus again i will tell major pathway is angle yes meshwork canal of schlem and eventually epicycleral this is a major pathway minor pathway normally 10 to 15 percent of the fluid drains into ciliary body because it's little bit you can say permeable so ciliary body actually is passing through the muscle of ciliaris layers of the muscular bundles and through that it goes to the choroid then supracoroidal space and eventually into scleral and this is scleral venous network and then there is episcleral venous network and eventually it also drains is that right this is our second pathway now normally it, as i told you drains only 10 to 15 percent but in those conditions where there is relative blockage here right in those disease condition or pathological conditions where at the angle trabecular mesh through the trabecular meshwork fluid cannot easily go through then the role of this pathway become more important because when fluid cannot go through that some of it fluid some of it which is not allowed to go will enter into this pathway and this pathway is called uvo yes scleral pathway because this is uveal tissue uveal tissue is your ciliary body and choroid is that right so this is called u of course iris is also part of uveal tissue so this is this pathway is called uveo uveo scleral pathway so the important thing you need to know is that under physiological condition it is a very minor pathway only 10 to 15 percent of aqueous humor may be drained by this pathway but under, under pathological condition when there is excessive resistance of the drainage of the fluid through this meshwork 
then this pathway become more efficient to drain the aqueous humor but it never becomes so efficient that to drain to compensate for losses here so it slightly increases its drainage but still if there is too much resistance here intraocular pressure will eventually go up am i clear then we become another mechanism that is to keep the system clean for that nature has put their phagocytic cells right for example some phagocytic cells are present macrophage type cells which are present over here yes they are present at the what is this at the surface of the plates of trabecular meshwork at the surface of the plates of the trabecular meshwork there are special nature has provided us a special type of phagocytic cells there and these phagocytic cells right they are phagocytosing the rbcs or wbcs or other cellular debris or even large molecules of protein right so that this mesh work should remain clean even though under some pathological condition the cellular debris which come over here rbcs wbcs or uh, you can say bacteria or fibrotic process that this system is overwhelmed it and it cannot clear them then secondary glaucoma come but number one there are phagocytic cells present in the on the surface of the plates of trabecular meshwork number two around this vein right what is this vein this is a vein which is actually not a vein i will repeat it again and again canal of schleim around it there is a special type of gel which is called peri peri canalicular gel or interstitial interstitium right this interstitium is also very rich in these phagocytic cells is that right this interstitium is also very rich in these phagocytic cells right then even this epithelium of iris it also has some phagocytic cells right do you think there is a epithelium in front of the iris yes sir pigmented no i don't think so i think it's only on the back what do you think dr sir yes it's only on the back front is just naked stroma in nature a few things are naked as well sometimes but here it is always naked front is also smooth yeah very good so what we are talking about that because epithelium is on the back so phagocytic cells are on the back even on this epithelial cells and choroid so what i'm saying that there is a special mechanism that which uh, leads to the maintenance of this aqueous humor clear is that right and drain it well mechanism is phagocytic cells which are present on yes what is this iris epithelial cells and they are also present on the yes, trabecular meshwork plate surfaces and also these cells are present around the canal of schleim so all these phagocytic cell together what they are doing they are removing the particulate matter even they can remove by pinocytic process uh, protein molecules if they leak normally normally proteins don't leak plasma proteins don't leak here to keep the optical system clear is that right we call it blood aqueous barrier but in some pathological conditions right some inflammatory reactions uh, when here severe inflammation occur then this epithelium become disturbed and even protein molecules may yes enter into aqueous humor circulation right usually these phagocytic cell not only remove the particulate matter they also do pinocytosis of protein molecules but if there is too much pathology of course then whole system is overwhelmed right and then of course uh, aqueous humor cannot be kept optically clear right 
Now, any question about aqueous humor? Any question? Okay, last word. Before I close this lecture, I will just tell if intraocular pressure is high, what happens? What is the real damage to the eyeball? I will tell very briefly now, detail we will do in the lecture of glaucoma. Actually, when intraocular pressure is high, when intraocular pressure is high, let's suppose due to the problem at angle, this meshwork is more resistance. If intraocular pressure become high, then this pressure will be transmitted on what is this? Retina. retina. This pressure will be transmitted on the retina and then what will happen here? Normally what happens that this layer of the retina, it is having which cells? Ganglion cells here. What are these cells? Ganglion, ganglion cells. And ganglion cell processes are making nerve fibers, right? And here are also, what, what are these cells? Ganglion cells. The other cells also, you can see, watch the lecture on retina, but here I am showing only ganglion cells. From the ganglion cells, these fibers are going towards the optic disc, right? These fibers eventually go to the optic disc. And in the optic disc, right, all these fibers, right, they pass through the cribriform plate and eventually go out as optic nerve. Is that right? Now, if pressure remains high in the eyeball, these ganglion cells are very sensitive. Number one, mechanical pressure can lead to their degeneration. Number two, a very important, I will make one ganglion cell larger here. This is ganglion cell nucleus. Here it is connected with bipolar cell, you know. And this is the peripheral, this is going to optic nerve. This is the axon of the ganglion cells, which is eventually going just part of from here to here, right? Now, actually what happened, due to pressure, due to too much excessive pressure here, right, this exoplasmic flow is blocked. Excessive pressure here, right, lead to relative blockage in exoplasmic flow. So, nucleus is mainly providing all the necessary proteins and other components for this axon. Is that right? Because DNA is present over here and genes express over here. Protein synthesis occur over here. And through the exoplasmic flow, the components are going through the optic nerve up to the its final terminal into lateral geniculate body and other areas in central nervous system. Now, when pressure is here, this exoplasmic flow is interrupted. And eventually these cell, these axons or nerve fiber start degenerating due to high intraocular pressure if it is chronic or very severe high for even short duration, right? It may lead damage to the ganglion cells and their fibers, exoplasmic flow is compressed, reduced and nutrition and other components to the nerve fiber are not provided and optic nerve fiber start undergo degeneration. Secondly, as you know that from here is it is which artery, central retinal artery and its branches are going over there. Actually these are also compressed and when this vascular flow is also impaired, there is further damage to this, <coughs> what is this ganglion cell layer, nerve fiber layer due to relative ischemia right that further damages these fibers and these fibers undergo degeneration so what happens if there is chronically elevated even moderate elevation chronic even moderate elevation for long time or severe elevation for short time of the intraocular pressure will actually damage what ganglion cells and their processes which are optic nerve fibers so optic nerve is diseased it undergo a trophic process we say there is optic neuropathy. There is optic neuropathy due to raised intraocular pressure resulting due to degeneration of optic nerve fibers which are actually axons of ganglion cells and this damage occurred due to excessive pressure right on the vascular system in the retina and also excessive pressure to the nerve fibers. Is that right? And when all these fibers start degenerating, optic nerve becomes smaller. Is that right? And 
here in this area when fiber degenerate this optic cup right it become pathologically deep what it happens it become pathologically deep normally it was like this but then it become pathologically deep so raised intraocular pressure can lead to special type of optic neuropathy which may re which results into deepening of the physiological cup or we say le which leads to pathological cupping of the optic disc along with that damage of part of the retina and ganglia cell which clinically manifest as defects in specific type of defects or scotomas in the visual field so this is how raised intracranial pressure can produce blindness is that right that's why it's very important that our production right circulation and drainage system should be working normally and draining mechanism should always be able to yes match the production of aqueous humor right any question sir uh, we have talked in detail about the aqueous humor but i am concerned about how the vitreous humor is secreted and it is how it is that we will talk later okay any more question okay class dismissed